Hello friends and welcome to the third episode of the Monday Show. I am your host Wes, with me as always my good friend Roots. Roots, how was your Monday? Uh, it was amazing actually. Uh, not having to work is always good and uh, there's a balloon festival going on in uh, Colorado Springs so uh, checked it out and that was cool. Hot air balloons? Yeah, they uh, have people from around the uh, United States come. Everybody brings all these cool different balloons. You got, uh, you know, the the old mother with the in the shoe. You got kids hanging from the outside. You got Yoda, Darth Vader, um, all sorts of did like Sonic the Hedgehog. So what it is is you have all these people with money. They love. They get into this hobby, and they buy these cool balloons, and then they kind of like you know like car shows and stuff. And so they'll go around the United States and um, to these different places. I know one in New Mexico uh, uh, later on in the year. And so I, they just go around the um, United States and do it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, sounds cool. I've, I've never yeah. witnessed anything like that. I bet it is pretty cool. Yeah, I, thought, my, I, I like it. My closest thing I've ever experienced to hot air balloons is when you land, when you're playing Rush and you land and the balloons fly over yeah or like isn't there some in uh that one uh the climb i think you might see some off in the distance but I haven't yeah. played the climb no what oh my god <laughs> play the climb. every every episode dude anything we record there's something that comes up that i'm like oh wow i feel like i'm assaulted slapped in the face <laughs> with some kind of knowledge wes there's another uh game for uh um somebody to force them to play although uh it would be actually enjoyable yeah, it's, it's actually one of my backlog that I want to play, is the oh, climb. Perfect. Backlog yeah. report. Backlog report, exactly. It's one one pretty high on my list, actually. All right, so uh, let's talk a little VR here. Uh, well, first of all, let's address Ace Combat 7. We announced on the Sunday show yesterday that we were going to be doing some additional coverage to Ace Combat 7. You know, I played it about a month ago and uh, and we talked about it so uh, just look back in the archives if you want my impressions on it but Roots got it from Gamefly but it's not installing for him for some reason yeah. so he no, hasn't been able to check it out yeah I think it's a disk issue and uh, I've already sent him um, the notification that their disk sucks and they're gonna send me a replacement one so I'm gonna put it in the mail and um, from what you say, they're really good about sending out a disc. So it's probably going to go out, uh, maybe not um, Monday, but uh, today because of uh, the holiday. But probably tomorrow, I'll probably have it Wednesday. Um, I was kind of bummed. I was ready to check it out and tried to install it three times and spent about an hour and a half, um, you know, just looking at the screen. So Definitely strange. I've never had that happen from one of their games, but uh, I guess there's a first time for everything. What they do is they have these machines that uh, resurface the, the discs, so when a disc gets sc scratched up, they can actually buff it down and, and resurface it and make it look like new. But every time you do that, it degrades the disc just a little bit. And that's probably what they've done to that one. It's probably... Well, it depends too. Like um, when my kids were little, they, you know, uh, you know, you can take them into somewhere and you get them repaired. They had jacked up like their favorite game, which was like a Super Mario Wii game or something. And um, I took it in and they, because uh, it was scratched and they fixed it and it looked perfect, but it never played. Um, so, you know, I would imagine sometimes they can make it look like it this should play and, uh, uh, and then they waste Roots' time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a delicate situation. Uh, uh, it it's easy to to go a little too deep with one of those things, and I imagine that's probably what's happened here. So yeah, Roots will be getting that hopefully in the next few days, and then uh, after he plays it, we'll come back and give our impressions then. But that's okay. We don't really need the content today. We have a jam packed show first of all roots and i are going to talk about downstream vr whitewater kayaking which we both had the chance to play and then we're going to go on to talk about our games of the month for august but uh first of all downstream vr whitewater kayaking it just came out last week uh 
we reported on it on the uh, the Sunday show, the Virtual Strangers show, and uh, it looked pretty cool. So Roots picked it up. Roots, what were your impressions of downstream VR whitewater kayaking? It's hard as fuck. It's really, really hard. Well, it's a kind of like you. I was telling you, it's got a, a learning curve that uh, um, I have not found my way around yet. Um, I'm still stuck at the corner. Um, but uh, it's really cool. It's very fast paced, very arcade like. Ex exactly what I would imagine. Um, the only thing that I was hoping that uh, could be different would be, uh, you know, like I was telling you, Ninja, Le Ninja Legends uh, staff, the way that it worked, where you could like kind of work it away around, and it felt like an oar, like the like the you know, on both sides it was connected, and I I kind of wish it was like that, but. Uh, um, it's really cool actually and uh, I think once you get it down I could see how this would be amazing one of the coolest things I thought was you could I don't know I, I don't know if they were real but there was other players names on there and then at one point um, I was in there I was playing myself so there's a lot of uh, reasons and I was like yelling at the people to get out of my way and they weren't listening so but it was it was really cool yeah they they give you a disclaimer at the front telling you that they're gonna be uh, recording your information and part of that is uh, for like highlights and things along the run so uh, I had that too that there was uh, like three or four uh, other people that I was racing with but I, I had the feeling that they weren't really people that it may have been uh, a recording of someone else's run so uh, I think that's what you're seeing there yeah, let me ask you this, because uh, that makes me feel really apprehensive now. That means that there's a really, really shitty version of Roots bouncing around off the rocks back and forth over and over again. Like I was telling you, man, I I, uh, I started recording it, and I was like, man, I'm not putting this out until I get this down. Because <laughs> except for maybe like, let's laugh at this, because it was it was very difficult and um it to, i mean it's not that it's hard it's just uh remembering how everything goes and your intuition it's kind of like when you're driving a car and you skid in snow and you know you're supposed to turn into the skid instead of against it and you don't are the, the slide you don't know that um instinctively you want to do the opposite and it can make it worse i whatever i was doing didn't matter i just kept making it worse and worse and then all of a sudden i'm dying and i never finished it How, did you finish it any races i finished yeah i finished one it took me three attempts on normal difficulty uh i was terrible at first just like you said uh constantly no matter what i did it seemed like i would constantly rotate counterclockwise and literally on the first run i went down the stream backwards as much as i went down the stream <laughs> forwards it was terrible I was uh, running into rocks. I would push off of one and run into the other one. And, uh, yeah, I was starting to lose faith. But then it dawned on me that I think my oars might constantly be in the water. Why don't I change my height? So I went into the settings. Uh, I made myself a lot taller. And all of a sudden, I had a lot more control. And uh, I didn't have a perfect run. I didn't come close to being on pace with those uh, 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 recorded, you know, other other players in there. But I did make it to the finish line in one piece, and uh, it was fun. Yeah, so what you're saying is if I was in there racing and I, I would be looking at Weasel going by, and I'd be thinking, I can't catch that guy because he's actually finishing <laughs> the race, and I'm still smashing into shit. But yeah, actually, I, I liked everything about it. The only thing I didn't like about this game, honestly, and, you know, the ore thing isn't even really something I d dislike. It's just something I need to get used to. Only thing I disliked about this game was Roots' skill in it. I didn't like that at all. <laughs> um, so I need to get better, but I am going to go back into it because it, it was fun. It was uh, very much exactly what we, um, or at least I think we imagined it was going to be yeah yeah absolutely it uh it actually was a bit more polished than i expected it to be because uh you know the trailer doesn't really do it justice it's it's a lot better inside the game than it is on this this trailer here and um yeah the, it's it, it had a steep learning curve basically and and that really is to be expected 
but uh, a lot of people are enjoying this game it's getting some pretty good reviews so I'm sure that it's not just broken I'm sure that uh, practice will make perfect here and uh, this game will be a lot of fun once you get some experience in it yeah I just needed to go back through the tutorial and uh, listen this time I think so. did you do the uh, practice the optional practice no at the end of it? see that's what's funny I was like even after I still jacked up the first time I went back in the tutorial did it again and then it was like practice and I would literally said I don't need practice and then I went out and I started smashing into shit and uh, yeah I should have practiced uh, it's one of my yeah, well, sore well, points so well when when you go into the practice they teach you other things they teach you how to drift and and, uh, and other things as well there was like two or three maybe even four more techniques oh, God. that they give you tutorial on when you go into the practice thing so yeah I went into the practice before I even started and, and played around in that for five or ten minutes yeah see that's where I, I failed I think I need to go back in and and uh, and just start rocking everybody's records yeah so. that drift move is pretty pretty crucial if you don't know how to do that you got to uh, you got to learn it okay all right, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely a fun game. How much did it cost, Roots? I think it was 20 bucks. I I I don't know. I just picked it up cuz I it was new. Let me check real quick. That I think it's $20 if I'm not not mistaken. Yeah, it was a solid title. It gives you that same outdoorsy feeling like uh like when you're playing Rush. Obviously, it's a different activity than uh the uh, base jumping. But it's the the graphics are, are very similar, and you get that same feel. Yeah, and there was like what four or five different um, uh, areas you could go. I obviously I picked the Rocky Mountains because um, I live here and I wanted to check out the Rocky Mountains. But um, then then there's one several different levels in each one, and the, uh, they're, this is early access, right? So I believe. Um, but it was twenty dollars, uh, so um, I definitely worth twenty dollars. And uh, content-wise, I haven't even scratched the surface because um, I, everything was locked, you know, because I sucked so bad. Um, well, if at first you don't succeed, try again. Oh, I was going to say give up. But no, yeah, try and try <laughs> again. I'm definitely going to raise my height. And I, maybe that was the problem, too. So that's a good tip. Yeah, it helped me out a lot. when I, I think my, my paddles were just staying in the water, and that's why I was constantly spinning. And uh, it was like impossible that first run. I couldn't control it at all. It was like pinball off the, you know, off the banks, that, constantly running into stuff. That's kind of good though because it it I don't know if you it was the same for you, but um, being helpless and drifting and bouncing into stuff. I mean, it it felt real. I was like, oh shit, I'm trying to move this thing and it's not, you know. Um, in video games everything seems easy right well clearly i'm sure real kayaking you don't just get in there and start really doing it easily uh it takes skill and um i guarantee if somebody actually i'd be interested if anybody's ever kayaked and has played this um if it would be uh similar i'm pretty sure they probably would do a lot better than almost anybody else because it's probably um done very close to um you know the same yeah i imagine that the uh the techniques are similar the uh, the you know the the movements the uh, the different moves that they teach you and ways to deal with the current uh, I imagine it is based on reality it seemed that way to me anyway yeah anyway solid title lots of fun uh, but only pick it up if you've got time to put into it it's definitely a, something that's going to take time to master all right, so that's going to bring us to the games of the month for August. So uh, what this is, every month at the end of the month, we take a look back at the games that came out last month, and we pick a few out that we thought were the best, either because we played them and had a lot of, a lot of fun with them, or maybe it's just a game that made a big impact on the community something that was popular something that a lot of people bought something that a lot of people liked uh, so each month we were picking a few of these games and then at the end of the year we're gonna have our games of the year episode 
and uh, we'll pick from uh, our list of the games that we're picking now month to month and uh, it's a comprehensive list it's not just PSVR or I'm sorry it's not just PC VR but we're also including some PSVR titles some oculus quest titles we're going to be all inclusive here it's not just stuff we played uh, we're looking at the entire month of um, of releases and picking out some uh, to highlight so that said there were a lot of games that came out in august a lot of games and if you just think back a month ago to our august preview there was like nothing there was just a handful of games that we were looking at but we said you know I'm sure that they're gonna add stuff in and boy did they um, the uh, you know many months go by and the PCVR community laments the fact that PSVR has so much awesome stuff coming out while nothing seems to be coming out on PCVR well let me tell you folks in August of 2019, this was not the case. PCVR won this month, and they won in a big way. So that said, we're going to start with uh, with the smaller platforms. We're going to start with PSVR and Quest, and uh, we're going to end with the PCVR stuff because there's so much more of it. Again, this is a small fraction of the uh, the releases uh, that came out this past month. We're not going to talk about your uh, what's it called banana defenders or whatever it was we're not going to talk about all the small indie five dollar games and stuff we're talking about the big major releases here and i'm going to list off some of them and um roots and i are going to pick out a few to talk about here all right uh so let's start with psvr playstation vr this past month uh we did have a few games come out on playstation vr uh but most notably we had the Angry Birds Movie 2 VR, Under Pressure, a movie tying game. Looked really cool. We had the Firewall Zero Hour Operation Dark Web DLC, which is a pretty big deal. A very popular game. Uh, we had No Man's Sky Beyond, which came out. Uh, and we had Waltz of the Wizard Extended Edition. All right, Roots. Uh, out of those four major PSVR releases... Which one would you think uh, would be the uh, the alpha, the number one? Oh, the one I'm showing right now. No, not the one I'm not showing right now. Uh, this is the second one. The, the one I'm showing right here is No Man's Sky, and this is the alpha of pretty much everything that came out. Um, you know, we were discussing what, what makes it the, the top, you know, uh, game and there's a lot of criteria and you could look at it from different angles but as far as um, what's going to be biggest for the industry and especially PlayStation VR this is it yeah I agree a lot of people were complaining about the PlayStation VR version of this being blurry at launch but those were mostly people who also had PC VR people who just play PlayStation VR are loving this game they're playing it every day just like the uh, PC VR players are playing their copy every day uh, yeah definitely the most impactful title uh, of August and maybe the most impactful title of the year so far No Man's Sky Beyond um, all right with that said if, if you're gonna pick that as number one uh, I'd also like to to uh, talk a little bit about the, the Firewall Zero Hour op Operation Dark Web, which you had up on the screen a moment ago. This is a pretty big deal, too. Uh, sure, it's monthly, or not monthly, but seasonal DLC. But this is a huge game. This is a huge game in the PSVR community. Even still, this game just celebrated its one-year anniversary. Uh, currently, by the way, there's a free demo going on and double XP so if you don't even own this game you can get on there right now if you have an aim controller and uh, and play it and um, they're rewarding everybody with double XP so the more you play the faster you level up and uh, yeah free of charge as a birthday celebration so happy birthday firewall VR firewall VR <laughs> <laughs> firewall zero hour and uh, and I, I gotta say as much as uh, 
negative things as has been said about this game recently because of the bugs that the uh, the new DLC has brought in and the microtransactions. I got to give kudos to the developer for supporting uh, supporting this title even still. You know, a year may not seem like very long, but in VR years, uh, that's a long time for a game to still be fresh and popular. A game that people still play every day. Uh, yeah, being relevant a year later is kind of a big deal. And these DLC packs uh, are a lot uh, have a lot to do with uh, with that. So, um, No Man's Sky obviously the no-brainer for the month. But uh, every time Firewall has one of these huge updates, it's a big deal, and I feel like maybe we gloss over it a bit on this channel because we don't have the time to get in there and grind like uh, like everybody else. Yeah. All right. Uh, so moving on, let's talk a little bit about Oculus Quest. We listed a, a few Oculus Quest titles on here as well. Um, Again, this is just a small fraction of what actually was released. With PSVR and with Quest both, uh, there's always a bevy of, of PC ports that come in. And a lot of times we don't cover that stuff because we realize that a significant portion of our audience is our PC VR gamers. And they already know these games inside and out. But uh, that said, let's talk about Quest releases. On August 8th, we got Ninja Legends, a game that Roots and I tried on the Rift. On August 15th, we got Time Stall VR. And also on August 15th, we got the PC port of Red Matter. And then we got uh, just this last week on the 29th, we got Akron Attack of the Squirrels, which for those of you who don't know is a, uh, a cross-platform VR to mobile phone party game. Uh, that's kind of a versus multiplayer deal. A very unique concept and a very cool looking game. Uh, Roots. Uh, out of all the games I just listed for quests, what would you say is the quest game of the month? Uh, this one's harder for me because, I, you know, I've got two, okay? I've got two that I would put in the category for best, um, and Akron's not one of them. Um, not that it's not a bad, I just, I'm confused about that game, exactly what you can and can't do. And we can talk about that in a second, but, um, the first one that I, I guess I'll just bring up the first one that will go to both because, uh, um, and tell you why I think each one of them should be considered, uh, um, the number one for the, for, uh, this month. The first one would be Ninja Legends and, um, it, it just, uh, the, the movement, the, the fighting style, the way that it, um, is almost made for a quest in, in the essence of of just hacking and slashing, spinning around and doing everything you do in this game. Um, I could consider this to be um, top notch, number one for the uh, month. And then my other one would be uh, um, Red Matter. And uh, um, for the graphically, uh, you know, and what, what do you what do you think about um, I guess between those two, which ones which one would you say would be a a bigger choice? Um, well, I see what you're saying here. in In terms of just sheer fun, uh, when you're playing Ninja Legends was a ton of fun, and when we were playing that on the Rift, it was one of those rare cases where you're saying, you know what, I think I might would rather play this on the Quest. And uh, when we made that statement, when we were talking about Ninja Legends, uh, there were actually comments that people left saying, hey, you know, I played it on both, and you're right. It's better on Quest. This game was made for Quest. Uh, so I get it. I get you there. Ninja Legends is a lot of fun. But if I had to say what is the game of the month on Quest for August, I would have to say that it's Red Matter, just because of how well-received it was and how good we already know this game is. Uh, having played it on PC, this is an awesome game, and uh, apparently the Quest port of it, probably the best PC port that has come to Quest thus far in terms of quality. These guys did a job that no other uh, development team has been able to replicate thus far, and uh, they've brought over a very impressive version 
of Red Matter. Now, not only that, but the sales. Apparently, this has been very successful in terms of sales on Oculus Quest. They were tooting their own horn not long ago, saying that they have already sold more Quest copies of it than they've sold Rift copies of it, which is uh, surprising in some ways, but not so much in others when you take Steam VR into account. But uh, yeah, universally praised this game. Everyone was amazed at the quality and uh, it sold a bunch of copies. So I think that uh, without question, the game of the month for Quest in August was Red Matter. Yeah, yeah, I would have to agree uh, for everything you said there. And not only because of Steam sales, but um, think about this, you know, uh, Rift has how many more titles to play than the, the Quest? I mean, it's kind of hard to, it's a, apples to oranges, you know. The Quest has only got a limited amount of titles, so of course they're going to sell more Red Matters at this point. Uh, right. So. Well, well, like like I said when we, when we talked about it the other day, uh, you know, before Cross Buy, there wasn't much incentive to buy titles from the Oculus Store if they're available on Steam. At least if you buy them on Steam, you have the incentive... We well, have multiple incentives. You, first of all, you have the incentive that you can share it. You know, on Oculus, often you don't have multiple save slots. You can't even uh, share the game with members of your family on the same computer. Like, they lock it down that tight. Uh, there's one game, and you're playing it. If your wife or your kids want to play it, you got to buy another copy. Um, so there's a lot of incentive to go to Steam because not only can you share with people on the same device, but you can share uh, with up to five different people across ten devices. So whenever I've had a choice before Cross Buy, uh, I always would choose Steam over the Oculus Store. So uh, not that surprising that they didn't sell very many copies of this on the Rift Store. Uh, I think it's an unfair comparison. Uh, to uh, uh, to make without including Steam VR data, right? Um, I agree. But still, it did very well, and uh, and it's a great game. It's a great port, and it's the game of the month on Quest. But is it the game of the month overall? That's the question. Well, that's a question that we can't really answer until we get into some of these PC titles, and that's what we're going to do now. We're going to start talking about. Uh, what was a banner month, honestly, for PC. When I was looking at the list of PC VR releases for August, there were some 50 to 75 titles on it. Just a ton of stuff came out this past month. But we got it narrowed down here to about 10 or so. I'm going to go ahead and read down the list here, and we'll, we'll talk about a few of them afterwards. Um, chronologically ordered, of course, we already mentioned on August 8th we got Ninja Legends, on the Rift. Yes, it did come out a little bit earlier in Steam Early Access, but it came to all other platforms on August 8th. Uh, we got VR support for Dirt Rally 2.0 also on August 8th on Rift and Steam. Um, then we got the Big Daddy, the one we already talked about just a moment ago, No Man's Sky Beyond, August 14th on all platforms. Then we got the surprise release of the month, Westworld Awakening. We told you a month ago that there would be a surprise release. There always is one. Well, this, this month was no exception. Westworld Awakening AAA quality title just dropped in our lap on August 20th. Two days later, on August 22nd, The Tower 2, a game we talked about not long ago on the Virtual Strangers show. Really cool looking game that I meant to get in and check out but kind of slipped under my radar with everything else that came out uh, something we're probably going to get back into uh, very soon uh, we had Vanishing Realms which came out of early access and also released the Sundred Rift DLC which over doubled the size of the game and brought a lot of modern production quality into Vanishing Realms that came out on um, well I didn't put the date down for that one Zoom is probably the 22nd, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> right, right around that area there. Yeah. And then this past week on the 27th, we had Until You Fall, which we just talked about yesterday on the show. An awesome game from Shell Games. Roguelike um, melee game. 
super cool. And then the game that we just talked about a moment ago, on a day later on August 28th, we got downstream VR whitewater kayaking. And then to round it all out, uh, from uh, Wolf and Wood, we got Hotel R&R uh, just a couple of days ago on August 29th for Rift 5 and Valve Index. So, what was that? That was about, uh, I don't know, about 12, 13 titles there. And that was just the, uh, the most notable titles that I saw skimming over. There were a lot more than that. But uh, I think if we're going to talk about what the game of the month is, that it probably lies somewhere in this list. So, uh, Roots, let's just get right to it, man. Out of all this stuff here, let's go ahead and, and, and decide. What would you say is the game of the month? Uh, game of the month, I think, has to, has to go to No Man's Sky. In my opinion, everything else on there is good. Um, but nothing there is revolutionary or uh, um, will bring people into VR like this game. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. You know, it, even if we haven't had a lot of time to get in and play this, it's obvious uh, the impact that this game has had on the VR community. All of the message boards, all of the uh, the, the the chat rooms, the discords. Everywhere, every day, people are talking about this game and how awesome it is. Uh, even the people who are upset about the problems that that uh, that were had at, at launch, which, by the way, seem to be uh, diminishing day by day, just as we knew that they would. Um, even those people, uh, you know, if this game wasn't so awesome and epic, they would just give up. So the fact that people keep tinkering with it, keep trying to make it better, really speaks volumes, in my opinion, about uh, how important this game is to VR. Yeah, and uh, how about your friends list, man? Do you, like, every time I look around, turn around, somebody's going in and out of, or you know, of uh, No Man's Sky. So there's a lot of activity out there for this game. And um, yeah, I still haven't taken off from the planet i'm a little ashamed from to say that have you <laughs> have you played much or no i haven't went back into it uh, i read an article i've been waiting on the patch you know the rift patch to uh to bring in some optimization and some better uh uh you know i, I don't want to tinker with it i want it to work they released a patch last week for uh i think for uh vive and index and they're working on the uh, rift patch it may have already uploaded in the last day or two but as of about three days ago it was in the uh, experimental beta uh, stage mm. the uh, the rift optimization so yeah I, um, I'm definitely going to get back into it uh, but I wanted to wait until I know knew for sure that uh, everything's been ironed out and I'm not going to have to sit and tweak this and that I want to be able to play it and, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of time. I don't, I don't need to spend half of my time in the uh, settings. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, I want to I want to check it out. I want to build my ship and fly away, but um, I want to do it in style, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so no-brainer for Game of the Month, No Man's Sky. Uh, but let's talk about some of the stuff we played, about some of the stuff that we really enjoyed. If I had to pick a game that I played this month that I enjoyed most of all. What game did I have the most fun in? It's probably Westworld Awakening. You know, it was kind of dropped in our lap out of nowhere. But as I mentioned prior to our uh, our TVs and movie episode we did a few weeks back, I'm a big Westworld fan. And uh, this is kind of a no-brainer for me to have a Westworld game in VR. And to have it come from Servios, and to have this top-notch, triple-A quality Westworld game is an absolute joy for me. And if I had to pick my game of the month, which I enjoyed the most, it would probably be Westworld Awakening. Um, Roots, what about you? If you had to pick one off of this list here, which one did you have the most fun in? Uh, it's close toss-up between two, um, but I, I think 
Um, it probably would come down to uh, um, this one, which would be Ninja Legends. And just because, uh, even though it's not even one of the ones that I, I would consider the top top, I really enjoyed this one. I, I enjoy the uh, the gameplay, the just everything about it. And um, it was very fast paced and I felt like it was the closest thing to like an old school arcade game. Um, Cause that's what I kind of get kind of, it's weird. Like growing up, we all played all these really cool arcade games and we thought it would be really cool to play this in VR or be in it. And now we get games that are close, but nothing that actually feels like you're in the game of an arcade game. And this one does a really good job of do doing that. I really enjoyed it. And um, um, it's got Shinobi powers. So who doesn't love Shinobi powers, right? <laughs> uh, I love Shinobi yeah. powers. I don't know about you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I agree. This game was a, lot, a load of fun. And it, it, every time we start talking about one of these games like this, it makes me lament the fact that i have to go to work every day and i don't just have time to sit and play all these games because yeah this was a game that i really enjoyed and i i had every intention of getting back into but i still haven't went back into that second time um but yeah yeah totally agree this this was a good one so what was the uh the other title the other title um that? i just played uh recently for the first time and that was until you fall and it was the polish the the defense, the the fact, uh, same thing that I like about downstream. Like I, I don't want the games to be easy. Like I played this game on um, medium or whatever the normal level is, and and um, I'm having a hard time getting past this boss here, and uh, um, that's good. I want it to be difficult from the beginning, especially in a game like this where it's touted for. Um, giving you reasons to go back in you're building things you're you're getting stronger you're getting new weapons uh you know shadow legend you know give me a bunch of weapons and that i can't use for shit you know um clearly that is not this game you need everything you need to be spent going back in and dying and so it's not as hard it's like i would even rate this differently than what i would have said about in death in death is roguelike it doesn't feel like this this game feels like you have to progress you need to go in and and get stronger and sure you can unlock certain things about in death but um i think this is a little different and i um i think people are going to realize it's a little bit more ahead of its time than um than what they think uh, it's just really good but it goes to show you how the times are changing in vr I just asked you what your game of the month was, and you gave me two melee games. You know, yeah. if we were to go back two or three months and tell ourselves that that we were going to be picking a couple of melee games as our favorite games for the month, and especially like uh, uh, one that's wave based and the other one that's uh, a roguelike, we would have said you, you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know exact what I mean? Exact opposite. So, uh, you're right. Um, for those exact reasons, because when we talked about both of these games, we both thought, oh, it looks good, but, um, and you specifically said, I'm really worried because it's melee. We've got this idea that all melee needs to suck, kind of like we've got, we've had this kind of idea that all um, bow and arrow is good, and we found that out. That's not true in a lot of games, too. You get in there and you're like, yeah, hey, this kind of sucks. This bow and arrow sucks. Um, but yeah, they the, both of these uh, did very well. The only thing I could think that this could do a little bit better would be collision between the, the, the weapons, you know, making it a little bit more obvious or more sound. Um, but, uh, you know, it's 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 got everything that a game needs to get people to come back in. And um, and I, I, I think it's really good. Yeah, uh, an uncommon amount of polish for a, a, a day one early access release. I mean, this seems like a, a like like a full release game. Like, you there's no jank. Like, there's literally no jank in this game that I've encountered thus far. Anyway, uh, again, like you said, it it's very difficult. But I'm sure it's just like the uh, the VR whitewater kayaking. It's just something that you have to practice to get good at yeah um and, and again uh it goes to show how much better these developers are getting now uh if you go into this game and try to wrist waggle with your sword to get through it you're going to die fast 
it's not going to work. And uh, prior to, to this year, pretty much every melee game, you could just do that and, and make your way through it. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with both of these choices. Very good, solid choices. Um, I want to mention a few others here because there was so much that came out this past month. Uh, I want to uh, have a, a few more honorable mentions uh, because I feel like it would be irresponsible of us to move on without talking about Dirt Rally 2.0. This was a game that was announced uh, months and months and months ago. It, it was released as a flat game and it was announced that there would be zero VR support for this. Well, the entire world threw a, a, a fit, got upset, petitions were signed. We, we mobilized and, and we made it happen, people. We got it in the VR and, uh, and it's $60. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we didn't buy it. I, I didn't, didn't buy, buy it. it. Did you buy no, it, No, there's a guy that wants to ride in my car, some creepy dude that just wants to order me around and shit and tell me where to go, and I don't want, I don't want to listen to his ass. Um, no, we discussed this, and we were saying how it's as good of a game as it is that you know, the word is it's not much of a different uh, game from the first one. And, you know, I'm not like, a, if I was like, oh, my God, I love the first one, like Alex, um, then I would be, uh, I would, I would definitely have it. But uh, when it's on sale, I'll pick it up. Um, but it's, uh, you know, I wonder, you know, do you really believe or, you know, that they weren't going to bring, that just seems weird, man. Like, did the first one just suck that bad that it didn't sell, that they just, there's no reason to make that put it in VR. Was it that hard to, to port it over a game that they already had already done? Sure, it's pretty fairly easy, right? To just do the same thing and tweak it. Uh, I wouldn't assume to know. I'm I'm not a game developer. I don't know if the profits justify the time, but obviously they must because in the end they did it. So. Uh, there must be some incentive for them. I just there, look so. at it, things differently sometimes. I mean, I, there, there's marketing and then there's marketing. Sometimes you know you can you can get a lot of free marketing by putting shit out there that you know people are going to freak out about. You know, it's 2019. It's not hard to to assume that people are going to knee jerk react and start freaking out. Um, so you kind of go ahead and you you put it out there and then you you wheel it back and then. You get your free publicity and everybody's happy, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, a, a title that people are coming around on more and more, It was, there was a little bit of uh, jank at first, but people seem to be working through that now. And, and people who really do have it dialed in say that it is better than the first one. Uh, is it worth buying? If, if you haven't played the first one yet, is it worth dropping 60 on the second one when you can get the uh, first one for $7? Yeah, I don't know about that, but, uh, but definitely deserves to be mentioned as one of the games of the month because this is a, a fairly big title for VR. Yeah. So. All right, so let's see here. Is there anything else I missed for the games of August that we need to talk about? I don't see anything. I think we... We pretty much touched on all the big ones there. So yeah, uh, the game of the month for PlayStation VR and PC VR, obviously No Man's Sky. In the game of the month for Quest, uh, August 2019, Red Matter. With a ton of other great releases this month. It was a very, very good month for uh, VR this past August. Um, which, like I said, is kind of strange, but not really. It's kind of expected. When we previewed August, like I said, there wasn't much to look at. We named off a few titles that we knew were coming. And to be honest, we didn't get a couple of those. Uh, those have gone on to become later this hmm. year titles. But um, a banner month, nonetheless. Tons of surprise releases and uh, maybe next month will be the same. Speaking of next, next month, we've jotted down here uh, a few of the more well-known, bigger releases that are coming uh, next month. We're not going to do what we did last time and, and read down a laundry list of things that we might get. Uh, 
you guys will see August like I said is a perfect example of how things go in VR they just release stuff man but anyway we've listed uh, six titles here that we know are coming in September titles to look out for and um, let's uh, let's read down the list here and then we'll talk about a few of them uh, on the 5th of September we've got touring carts coming from Ivanovich games on the 6th of September we've got Falcon Age coming to the Epic Game Store um, on the 10th we have the long-awaited release of Battle Wake from Servios on the 17th we're gonna have Groundhog Day like father like son story driven sequel to the Groundhog Day movie intriguing to say the least um, on the 24th of September we have the big one the one everybody's been waiting for what was supposed to be one of the games of August uh, Aspire One VR Operative from Digital Load again coming on the 24th of September and then uh, we don't have an exact date but we do know that Doctor Who The Edge of Time is supposed to release in September for PC VR, PS VR, and Oculus Quest so uh, hopefully we'll get a date for that one soon but uh, Roots there's six fairly large titles that we already know that are coming out in September which is a bit more than we had coming into August uh, which which one sticks out more than any uh, uh, of the other yeah two? it's got to be a spire one and it's just because it's so badass and every single time I watch a trailer I want to play it more and uh, the more gameplay I I watch the more um, impressed I am so uh, I, I want to see if it's as good as it looks you know yeah, this is one of those games that it's kind of like lo-fi to me. Yeah, what I'm seeing here looks really cool, but what I'm hearing is even cooler. The things that they're describing that you're able to do in this game are unique to this game. It's stuff we've never been able to do in VR before, and I think that more than anything is what has me hyped up for Aspire. Yeah, Man. yeah, it just looks really cool, and uh, um, it, like you said, the storyline, just everything about it, everything mechanics-wise. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, one hundred percent. The most anticipated game uh, for next month for me. Also, uh, looking forward to seeing how Battlewake does upon release. Anything from Servios is uh, is normally very good, um, and this looks cool. It looks like uh, it's a lot of. Uh, it may be one of those titles, like we were just speaking about, where practice makes perfect. Uh, but it looks like it could be a, a lot of fast-paced, epic uh, fun. I know you played the uh, the uh, the beta version of this. Uh, is this something that you might possibly pick up? This oh week? yeah, I'm gonna pick it up. Uh, you know, I would in the beta you couldn't do this story, and uh, that's what I think will be really cool. And uh, now that I know there's a chain on both sides, I should be good. <laughs> right, oh. right. Uh, Okay, yeah, so Battleway coming, Aspire 1 coming, probably the two biggest releases of the month. Anything else on here you want to talk about, Roots? Uh, just uh, I think Touring Cards is worth mentioning. Um, it definitely looks really, uh, really good. Uh, Mario Kart-like game. Um, I know we uh, got some copies of this, and we're going to check it out and talk about it on the show, but maybe next week, I don't know. Um, but uh, um, that, and then uh, I think... Um, in the uh, same line as uh, Westworld, um, Doctor Who coming out. I know it's not as big here in the United States, but um, in the UK, I can't think of a bigger show. And uh, I guarantee people like Alex and people um, that are in the UK are probably really, really looking forward to this um, coming out. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking it out. Not because I'm a Doctor Who fan, because I'm not. Uh, I haven't watched Doctor Who since I was a very young child, uh, but look at it, man! This thing looks awesome. Like uh, the the graphics look really, really, uh, really good, and the uh, it just looks weird. It has that level of strangeness to it that I just love in a VR game. So yeah, and uh, who doesn't love time travel, right? Yeah, it's perfect. It's another one of those things that are perfect for VR. Yeah. And, um, 
So yeah, solid choice here. Solid choice with the touring carts as well. Uh, a, a kart style racer, Mario Kart clone, whatever you want to call it. Something people have wanted for a while in VR. Sure, we had the uh, the VR carts, but that was originally, uh, I think, was supposed to be like a mobile game or something. And apparently, from what people say, it didn't port very well. This is uh, this is being developed from day one for VR, and uh, looks really cool. And like Root said, uh, we do have early uh, early access to this game, so we probably will go ahead and check it out this week before it uh, releases, and uh, we'll come back next week and give you guys our impressions on it. Yep. All right, I think with that said, that's going to wrap up the Monday show for this week. If you guys like what you've seen here, be sure to click that like button and leave a comment down below uh, and let us know which games are you looking forward to in September. Uh, maybe, uh, well, you know, that, that's probably a stupid question. Everyone's looking forward to Aspire 1. But is there something else that you're looking forward to? Maybe something we missed and didn't put on our little short list here. Uh, leave a comment down below there. And... Uh, yeah, if you've made it this far, we want to thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you can keep up with all of our nearly daily content here on the Virtual Strangers channel. All right, with that said, friends, we want to thank you for watching. And for Roots, I'm Wes. We'll see you tomorrow, friends. Bye-bye. Easy.